There we are. Ooh, glary lights. No way to avoid it, let's say. Hi, everybody. I'm just trying to pin this to the top of the page. Bear with me one minute. What the heck? That's unusual. Okay. There we go. So I took the DSP post off for now. And I pinned this video to the top and then I will, um, okay, I will unpin it when we're done. Hi, Pam, Karen. I saw Adrian on there earlier. Good morning, Debbie. Hope you're doing well today. There was a bunch of other people I missed. Janet, Stacy, Stephanie. Thank you guys all for joining. Hi, Angie. Hi, Patty. Hi, Linda. It's gloomy. It's windy again today here in Maryland. It's Yesterday was really crazy. The whole yard is full of debris. It looks crazy. Good morning from sunny Orlando with the land of the palm trees. That's my buddy there, in case you guys don't know. My buddy Angie. So, hi, Terry. Today I wanted to, before we start, I want to share one thing with you. And I made sure this was still available, but the stamp cleaning pad, if you don't have it, this is on clearance. They really should keep this. They did, by the way, just in case you missed it. Thank you for sharing, everybody. I appreciate it. They're going to bring back the um, Stamp and Pierce mat. I'm not sure why they decided to get rid of it, but they are going to bring this back, but they have to build up stock because I think it's sold out. So this is not going to retire. Woohoo! Now if we can get the um, embossing buddy off the chopping block and this. So if you don't have this stamp, cleaning pad it's really amazing and I'm going to show you when we go down how to reactivate it but it also does come with a refill but the best part was it was I think it was seven dollars originally and it was worth it believe me it was 750 so it is still available but now it's only three dollars now one other thing I will tell you if you get it you definitely should buy the refill but this cleans so much stuff off of dirty stamps. You have no idea. So two things. If you are a stamper, an item number. Hold on, I'll tell you. I cover this one up. Meh, hold on, I'll pull it up on my iPad again. If you have dirty stamps, so it's number 147047. And then there's also a cleaning solution. Let me write cleaning. And it's a stamp cleaning pad refill. That's still $3.75, but trust me, it's worth it. That one's $149,661. You can get almost anything off of a stamp. It is really cool. So my friend, Donna, you guys have seen her on here before commenting, I'm sure. She had an extra stamp set that she sent me. I don't know if she bought two or she Got two by accident. I think we've all done that, unfortunately, one time. So she sent me a stamp set and the one stamp she had used and it had a lot of staining. And the staining was from, and I'll show you, if you guys remember when we had these Delicata pads, it's kind of like a, a sparkly glitter pigment ink and it, it is really hard to get off. But this got the stamp completely clean. This is such an amazing product. And you know, I'm not one to tell you something's great unless I really love it. And at first, I didn't buy it because I was like, well, what do I need that for? I have the spray, I have the chamois. These are also amazing and I cut mine up finally. Um, I have all that stuff, but I was like, I'll just get it to see what it's about. So when you get it originally, it does not look like this, it's white. But as you use it, it gets really funky. And if you use it to clean like glittery stuff, the top does get a little scrubbed up. But when you refill it, it almost makes it cleaner again. It's awesome. I mean, you can get stuff off of stamps that maybe you haven't gotten off since you first stamped with it three years ago because you could never get it off. 
it works really, really well. So I highly recommend if you don't have one, get yourself one. The pads and the clearance rack, get yourself the refill. Might as well like add it to your order. I don't know if it'll still be there once they change over to the new catalog. Um, but I'm really sad it's retiring. So I'm going to email and just say, please consider keeping it. But get it while it's on sale because you never know. They might not keep it or they might bring it back. I don't really know. But anyway... Just as an FYI, one other thing I wanted to show you, I finally got my pre-order. So I'll show you, and I'm sure you've seen this before, but I'll show you the colors. They're so pretty. I think my favorites thus far are Misty, Bo Misty Moonlight, which looks purple the way I'm holding it. It's not purple. It's a really, um, it's a deep but soft blue. And I really like Just Jade. It's a really nice color. I don't think I have ever seen any color like this Just Jade, unless it was before I was really into Stampin' Up! maybe. I also like um, the Cinnamon Cider. is a great brown. It's definitely um, considerably lighter than Baked Brown Sugar. And then Bumblebee is a really pretty color. It kind of reminds me of a mix between Mango and Crushed Curry, if that makes sense. And then I really didn't think I was going to like the Magenta Madness, but it's very, very pretty. On, in the catalog, it kind of looks a little brighter, but it's a really nice color. I think it will go really well together, like these three together will go really well. Um, what's the other one? These will look really nice. These really nice so some really good color combinations and then if you wanted to just do one like this would look nice with the magenta and the um, misty but they're very pretty color so I did get that so I am going to attempt I'm gonna do my best I'm gonna attempt to send all of my customers from the past two months a card with a little sample piece of each of these papers so I have an idea of what I want to do so I'm not going to tell you that way when you get it it'll be a surprise but I have an idea of what I'm going to do so I'm going to try to make these since I finally got my order <laughs> and the other thing I did was this is hilarious look at this I finally tabbed up my catalog isn't it so nerdy I love it because I wasn't going to go to, I originally was going to go to Staples and have it bound, but I, was, I did that once and it was kind of like, meh, I didn't really like it. So I just, I had all these little extra tabs. So I took the time the other day and I separated, I put like what all the new um, sweets are. And then I did background stamps, inks and colors, you know, give me a little bit and I'll have the catalog memorized because I am kind of crazy like that, but that's just me. So Anyway, stamp cleaning pad, if you don't have it, I'm going to show you, before we actually make our project, I'm going to show you what it looks like when you put the new stuff on, because it does clean up pretty well, considering. So today, what we're going to do, and I had, I was a couple minutes late, because one of, both of my um, aqua painters, which these are retiring, but they're coming out with something new, so that's fun. There will be more than two of them. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about this or not, so I'm talking in code, but there will be more than two. I think they look pretty cool because they might have a little bit different um, tips. So that's all I'll say, just to be safe. But I'm going to show you how to use these. So one has alcohol, one has water, and also blender pens. So when you get blender pens, these come three in a pack. These, thankfully, are not retiring because these are one of the coolest tools. So you get three in a pack. And it has a tip on each end. They're both the same size. I think they are anyway. Yeah, they are. And these, I have had some of these probably as long as I've stamped. And they still work. Even if they're dry, you can do different things with them. And the nice part about this is they kind of will work together. I saw a technique recently that a lady did that I'm going to be sharing again. And we're going to work with two different things for this. So I, I'm attempting to make two cards. So one of them is a card that I know should work that I had like a fail a couple weeks back. So we're going to, not doing it the same, but we're going to bring it back and make myself feel redeemed. And then the other one, we're going to use the waterfront because I think it'll really make it look pretty cool. So, so you guys, a lot of you guys have your, yours bound. That's a, that's a good idea. I can understand that. I kind of liked it, but the problem is when I went to store them, like when they were done, then I had the rings and where I have them. 
my room is very big. I am very lucky. I have my own room to craft in, but where I keep the retired catalogs, it was just taking too much space. So I was, I did it once and I was like, mm, it's okay. Mine, I really looks like someone used it to, um, put out a fire and, um, craft with when I'm finished with it, <laughs> but that's a good catalog, right? <laughs> okay. So anyway, let me see. I did get my pre-order. And I will tell you, I don't know, you guys have probably seen so many videos, you probably don't really want to see what I got again. But I'll tell you, I got the World of Good. I got this really fun stamp set, which I thought I originally wasn't going to get because I'm like, well, I'm not a grandparent. But hey, I know lots of grandparents. So I thought this was such a great stamp set. And I think one of the funniest things was, I do that too, Fran. Now that you mentioned, I do have a fresh copy for storing, but I like like the X's so I know what I have. I like um, in this... No amount of money could ever show how much I love you because anybody could do this. But here's some anyway. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. I love that one. And then I also got the host set, which we are able to purchase these as demos. We don't earn them for free. But once the catalog goes live, you'll be able to earn these for free. This reminds me of a stamp set we had a few, few years back, but I thought it was so pretty, especially with the trees and the road. So I'll have to make one of these coming up. And then you have the little girl sitting under the tree reading a book. Kind of reminds me of Alice in Wonderland. And then the boy flying a kite reminds me of Mary Poppins. Can you tell what I'm always talking about? I have a little bit of a mental, mental obsession with Disney is the best way to put it. I did get this one too. So this one I'm excited to do to make some maybe shaker cards. So... I love these. I know the grandparent set is so cute. I thought if I could just get some, uh, get my mother-in-law, she could make her own cards, but she's like, no, I'm not creative. So if she's ever watching this, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> but the nice thing about the birds too, it cuts out the nest. I'm sure you guys have seen that one. That's been a lot of places. So anyway, what else did I get? Oh, one other thing. So I got, I'll show you these. I got the little in color enamel dots because they're super cute I know Disney is my favorite favorite Disney and stamping but Disney's like up here <laughs> and then I got the um in color paper which this I'm just gonna pop this open just so you can see some of the patterns this is really cute so if you are going to do my paper share just FYI this paper is included too both of the in colors which I didn't do that before so all of the paper, you will get a sampling of every single designer series paper. It's got dots. So this is all the in colors. And then the other side has wood grain. And then you can see there's a couple other patterns in there. And then there's one that has some words on it. Ooh, what is this? This is like a whole... It says share what we love in all different languages. How cute is that? I didn't even re read it. I saw a more and I thought, oh, it's in French, but it's in all different languages. That's really cute. So it has that one and then the dots, the writing. I think there's one other thing I missed. No, the wood grain. So there's four. So this should be pretty fun because it has all of the in colors in it. So if you do the paper share, which there is a link on my blog, if you go to, I think it's titled shares, 2020, 2022 product shares. So if you go there, it will take you to a Google form, which you do have to fill out the form. I have to keep track of who that I um, give it to. So I know how much to order and then it will go, Hey, Caitlin, hope y'all are doing well. Hi, Susan. So thank you guys. We're going to go ahead and flip down and get started. I'm going to show you really quickly the cleaning pad. So one thing in case you're watching this on the replay after the fact, I'm just going to try to say this ahead of time. I'm going to use um, shimmery white cardstock because it's a little bit thicker. You probably could also get away with thick whisper white or watercolor paper for the project we're going to do today, okay? I may also bring out the Stamparatus because when you're stamping on watercolor paper, sometimes you have to ink it more than once. But for what we're going to do is we're going to stamp some images, play around with the aqua painters and the blender pens, and we'll see what we get. So if you get a little motion sickness, oh, good morning, Suzanne. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Turn away. I'm going to flip you down. All 
Alrighty. All right. So we are locked into place. So if you were looking away, hop on back. Let me move the comments so I can see what I'm doing. Make sure I'm nicely in the screen and turn, fix the lights a little bit. So they a little bit brighter. Okay. So first off, Also got some of these ribbons too. Aren't they cute? I didn't get the magenta and I should have because it's much prettier in person, which is unusual. A lot of the papers, like you might think you're kind of like, well, I don't really think I'm going to like that color. But when you see it in person, it might change your mind. One color I don't feel that way is Rococo Rose. I just, I don't like that color. I don't know. Is it just me? Does anybody else not like one of the colors? I love the in colors that are retiring and I'm really sad, especially Pineapple Punch Blueberry Bushel. And Grapefruit Grove. I'm really going to miss those three, so I will never get rid of those. I have one pack of paper for each of them, so hopefully that'll be enough to hold me over anyway. So just as a little quickie, when you see the stamp cleaning pad, when you first get it, it's a beautiful, and I have a brand new one, but I don't want to open it. It's a beautiful, fresh white color. Clean, completely clean. And obviously when you start using it, it gets funky. Kind of the same way your Versamark can get, but you can still use it. So with your refill... What you do is, and you don't really have to do this every time because it definitely will clean things very well, is you, you just kind of spray this on. And you can see when you first spray it or drop it, it lightens up the color of the pad. I don't know if that, if you, yeah, you can tell right there. It's lightening up the color of the pad. So I have no idea what's in this, but it works amazing. One other thing it works really well for is... For your older wood stamps, if you have a stamp that maybe we have had, I don't think I have any of them that are kind of, because some of the wooden stamps, if you had one that was more of a solid image, it was kind of hard to get the, the ink off of. It really cleans and conditions the old wood stamps. So again, I know I sound like a, a record, but if you don't have this stamp cleaning pad, it's on clearance right now for three bucks. Hold on, I'll pull out my new one so I can tell you what number it is again. Nope, of course it's not going to show me. Give me just one sec, I'll tell you one more time. And then, the, so the refill is 149661, okay? And then, let's see if I can go back one page. The stamp cleaning pad is 147047, so it's three bucks. You cannot beat it. Great investment for three bucks. You might as well get two and get a refill while you're at it. So anyway, what we're going to do today, let me put this up so I don't knock it over, is we're going to start with the Mountain Air stamp set. And we're going to do a little bit of kind of uh, stamping in layers. We're not going to use the dies today thus far that I can think of. We're going to just use the mountains. And then the other one we're going to use is Waterfront. So as a matter of fact... I even was able to clean out, now granted these are pretty well stained, but these were from when we had those, um, not the pigment sprinkles, the ones before that, the brush show. And they, I used these with that and they got a lot of the color off. So they're really, really, really good. I don't know if you're supposed to use them with photopolymer or not, but I do and I wipe it off immediately afterwards and I haven't had any issues with it. So I don't know if it, you're supposed to, but that's what I do. All right. Sorry. I'm going to grab my shimmer white. So I think I have a couple pieces. Whoopsie. Cut already. So we'll do one, two of the shimmer white. I'll keep these out just in case. And then where, here it is. I was going to say, where in the world did my watercolor paper? So I have some watercolor paper. So this is the newer watercolor paper from Stampin' Up. It's the Fluid 100. There's a piece. Mm, I'll get out a new one just in case. So this, when you look at it, it does um, have two distinct sides to it. And again, let me see if I can, I'm not sure how well this shows up on here, but I'm going to do my best to show you. Sorry, I'm trying to put this somewhere. I know it's not going to fall over, but in my office, that's kind of nearly impossible. So one side is definitely much more bumpy and one side is a lot more smooth. So it just kind of depends. So this is five by seven. 
So you can just cut it in half. We'll do two of them that way. And then I have a couple extras of these. So I'm going to keep two of those. I'll put these two on the side. Move that little stack of paper out of the way. So what we'll do first is I'm going to do one on each. So I'll do the mountain air. I'll do a watercolor and a shimmer and then the same thing for the waterfront. Let me grab my trimmer. Real quick. So that's five, is that right? Yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna cut it to three and a half by five. Okay, so if you wanted to, which we might as well since I said I was going to do it and I'm going to do my best. I know a couple people told me they have trouble hearing me when I walk away. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best to not do that or not talk when I put my head down. But sometimes when I get really close in here, it kind of makes it a little hard. So bear with me. So I'm going to put my, I'm going to do it this way. Kind of go over here. So what I tend to do when I line up my paper is I usually line it up to the end here. And as you can see, I use my paper over and over and over again because I am a reuser, recycler. So I'm going to line it up to the end so I have a spot. Like that. So here's what we're going to do first. Now I know these are two different sizes. Oh, actually, look at that. I cut that down pretty good. Huh. So I usually do these in two different sizes. It's typically as a card front. Usually if you're doing a layer front, it would be four and a quarter by five, or sorry, four by five and a quarter. So I'm going to do the mountains first. And what I'm going to do is, so these also have two different sides in case you don't know. There's a smooth side and then there's a side that has the more of the markings on it or the ridges. So these are reversible. So I want to do it first, and it's not fair. I do have Purple Posy ink, but I know a lot of you don't because they discontinued it. So instead of, I was thinking of doing Purple Posy, but instead I'm going to go first with Highland Heather. And I'll just stamp it off before I do it. Let me move this over just a little bit. I'm going to go down just a smidge. So we're going to do this one first. And I'm going to stamp, and actually, you know what, I do need, let me stop being cheap for a moment and grab a clean piece of paper here. There we go. So I'm going to, just so I can stamp this off, I'm going to stamp this in Highland Heather because that is pretty light. I'm going to stamp it off and then stamp it on. So you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to ink this up just lightly. Stamp it off. Oops. Make sure you get the whole thing. Then I'm going to put the watercolor paper up here. Stamp it again. It's pretty light. Okay, so then let me grab my chamois. I'm going to wipe this off. And I'm going to also wipe this off with my new lint towel. And I'm going to flip it over and kind of line it up. It doesn't really have to be exact because they don't necessarily exactly match, but they're pretty close. So I'm picking up now the side that has the detail. And I'm going to do it in, what do I want to do? I'm going to do Pretty Peacock. I don't know what this is going to look like. Hopefully not too ugly. So Pretty Peacock. So you have your detail. Now remember, this is watercolor paper, paper that I used first. So it's definitely got a lot of tooth to it, okay? So that's why I said you might need to use your Stamparatus or if you have another stamp positioning tool because for some of these, especially these details, you might feel like you need to ink it more than once, okay? So I'm going to leave this like that for now. And what I'm going to do with this now is, before I move on, 
I'm going to take my blender pen, and the nice part is you can clean it off on your paper here. So I'm going to take my blender pen, and I'm going to just kind of spread out the color here just a little bit on the parts that are darker. I'm really just doing it on the side that look would be like the shadowed side of the mountain. Okay, The ones in the background are more just for that purple mountain's majesty-ish look is what I'm trying to go for. So we'll bring same thing. Just keep going with the shaded side. You can kind of bring it down a little bit because we are going to stamp something down here. So remember when you're doing this on watercolor paper, you can be a little bit more, I don't want to say rough with it, but you can press on it a little bit more. If you did this with Whisper White, regular Whisper White, the paper will pill and it, you can actually work it so much you'll work through the paper. So that's one of the nice parts about watercolor paper. You can really work it. You can add a lot of water to it. There are obviously many different types of watercolor paper. So if you have a different one you prefer, that is absolutely fine to use as well. So the other thing I want to do just for the purpley part is I'm going to end up bringing up a little bit of... Um, really really light highland heather up here but I'm going to do that with an aqua painter so for right now what I'm going to do is we're going to continue with this so I'm going to put clean this off and then I'm going to do the trees so now and I know I said I was going to do both of them back to back but I'm already digressing from what I said I fibbed so now I'm going to put the tree base and I'm going to keep it pretty close to the base of the mountain. So we're putting the peaks of the trees to the base. So let's see, what do we think would be a nice green? I would think something dark. So I think I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to go with mossy meadow. Shaded spruce might be a little too happy of a green. So we'll go with mossy meadow. And then we can go with a lighter green at the bottom. So shaded spruce. Same thing again. That's not really very dark to me. Again, it's probably most likely because of the watercolor paper. So I'm going to ink it once more. Okay. And I do have my mat underneath because this is um, a photopolymer stamp, so you do want your mat underneath. So now I'm going to, that was Mossy Meadow again in case you missed it. I'm going to clean this off and I'm going to flip this over. And we're going to add in some, I guess you would say like meadow or grass base. So I'm going to pull this off and then I'm going to flip it like this just like that. We're going to kind of go, not right up to it, but pretty close. So I'm flipping it up, picking it up, and I'm going to do pear pizzazz because that's a lighter color, but it's still a, a nice green that will go well with the mossy meadow. So just inking this up again, that's pear pizzazz, but it has a more of a lightness, like a grassy lightness to it. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to close this for a second, but I'm going to keep that out because I think we're going to use it a little bit. There you go. So stamping on watercolor paper definitely is a little bit different than stamping on any other color or any other type of paper. So kind of just keep that in mind. So I'm going to pull this off and just set it on the side for a second. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing for now. I'm going to go ahead back again with my blender pen. And I'm going to just kind of blend a little bit of the trees just to kind of fill in the color a little bit more. Man, the wind is so crazy outside. It kind of reminds me of if, if you guys have ever either gone to an island, Caribbean island, or gone to Hawaii or on a cruise of any type. And you ever sit on the beach and you remember 
how windy it is and you think man why doesn't this stuff happen when i'm at home this would be so cool yes and no because it is a little crazy at the same time just to hear the wind constantly roaring when you don't really know why or where but you know when you're on a beach you understand why it's coming <laughs> it's kind of funny so i'm just now going in lightly and softening up this pear pizzazz a little bit not really going to the tips of anything because i'm gonna do something else so there are those two okay so we have both of those covered so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back one more time and I'm actually gonna do the top first so I'm gonna take this now off and I'm gonna turn it to the side and I'm gonna take my Highland Heather which already has plenty in here if it doesn't just squeeze it from the back and it'll make a little circle there in the center but I really want this to be pretty diluted. So one of these has, this one has water, this one has alcohol. So you can use either, but when you use alcohol, it doesn't really blend the colors into each other so much. So you could stamp something and it won't actually mix the color. But I want to um, use water just to show you an example. So I'm going to take water and drop it in here. And I want it to try to get, I'm trying to stay away from that pile. I want it to be really, really light and diluted. So because I'm trying to get it so it's kind of more of like a really light purpley sky. So let me grab real quick before I start a piece of scrap paper. Okay. All right, so, because you don't want this to be sopping wet. You just want it to have enough that it has some color on it. So I'm just going to pick this up and then again, we are on watercolor paper, so it can take some of the water. Just going to kind of, I'm going to try to stay away from the mountain if I can help it. Just kind of fly along the edge. Now you can always squeeze some water so your tip is wet and just kind of re-spread your color. You can also wet your paper a little bit ahead of time and then when you pick up your color, you can kind of drop it in. So it has like that ethereal cloud look to it. Okay, so this will take a good amount of water. It is watercolor paper. That is what it's intended for. So I'm just kind of wetting that little mountain range we stamped earlier, but kind of right above it. One other thing with this paper though, you definitely need to give it a little bit of time to dry or hit it with your heat tool a little bit darker of a spot so and that's a little too dark you don't like the way it it filled out you just wet your brush kind of grab your water on there and then you can re-spread it around probably shouldn't be coloring on top of this foam mat but that's okay So if you do it ahead of time with the water, it kind of helps almost to bloom the color out. And then what you can do is, so I'll show you this. So I'm going to just close this lid for a moment. Close this up. I'm going to turn on my heat tool and I'm just going to heat this just on number one. Just so you can see what I mean. So if you heat it, you can certainly let it dry, heat both sides of it. It'll kind of dry it a little bit faster. You can see it's very wrinkly, but we can flatten it out. That's not a problem. So at this point, you have this purplish sky, but say if you wanted a little bit more kind of close to the mountain range, what you could do is you can dry it. And then, this isn't really 100% dry yet. Let's see if I can get a little bit more. It's still not dry dry, so I'm not trying to say it is dry because it's definitely not. But what you could do is you could go in with your 
aqua painter again. So we have, this is now uh, gorgeous grape, so it's a little bit darker. So just make sure your tip is wet again, not sopping, just wet. And you could kind of follow, so let's just say we'll follow along this line here. I'm not squeezing, I'm just holding. Bring in a little bit of your gorgeous grape. I'm gonna dilute it just slightly. And then follow your mountain edge that you just drew. And you can kind of give that darker color and then just drag it out a little bit to diffuse the color. Just like so. Now, one thing I do want to say, this is not my favorite watercolor paper to work with because I don't think it has as nice of properties as some other watercolor paper that I prefer. So that in mind, if this is your first maybe foray into watercoloring and you decided that you're like, oh, I'm gonna try this, it's probably not gonna give you exactly the results that you think. So I will, um, just trying to, this al almost too could look like a second mountain range back there as well, now that I'm looking at it. I will um, link on my blog to another watercolor paper that I really like as well. So again, this one is definitely, you can see it's a little bit more diffused, a little softer. So you can always just kind of wet the edge. And that's the cool thing about watercolor paper or watercoloring, I guess I should say. You can kind of wet the edge and reactivate the ink, which is kind of neat. You just want to make sure you don't really overwork any one area of the paper at a time because it can... It can definitely start to degrade it depending on what type of watercolor paper you're using, but I think it's got a pretty nice glow to it. So we're going to be done with that part. Now I'm going to do a little bit more with the green. So for that one, we used um, Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape. So now I'm going to do Pear Pizzazz. This one must need to be re-inked. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that my aqua painter is clean. So same thing again. So this was water. So I'm just going to show you if you were to do it with um, alcohol, which I'm pretty sure this is alcohol. Let me make sure. Yep, this is rubbing alcohol. So just rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol actually will kind of prevent the other color from running a little bit because it's not really uh, reactivating the ink as well. But also, that being said, it definitely dries much faster. So this way, if your paper's not wet or you're not using a really wet brush, you'll get much more of a streaky effect. So I'm going to just kind of bring in, just to kind of color the rest of this. So you see how fast that dried? So watch when I do this one. Again, this is just rubbing alcohol. So you you spread it and then, look, pretty much... Nothing after that because water will spread the color much more than the alcohol will. But alcohol is kind of fun to paint with because also it doesn't really reactivate the other ink. So you can you can actually layer with different... You could stamp this with a whole bunch of stamps and then go over and fill in the background with alcohol. And it's not going to smudge your stamps at all. But it definitely is a little bit more intimidating to work with because it doesn't really give you that flow like water does. So it's not necessarily that it's bad, it's just different and if you're expecting it to do one thing, it's not going to. It's going to do something different. But it's still pretty cool medium to be able to use. So you can totally tell it did not make any of this run whatsoever because it evaporates so quickly it doesn't really have the time to help it to bleed. So I hope that does make sense. So you could use water. I have water in one um, aqua painter and then I, this one has alcohol in it. The only thing you have to keep in mind is if you keep water in your aqua painter it's definitely going to need to be emptied or else it's going to get really stinky. Ask me how I knew that one. So there's that. So I'm finished with that. And now I'm going to go back and just do a little bit with the water pen. So 
even though this has alcohol mixed in it, I'm just gonna add a little water just to not waste the bottom of the ink. And even though these are wet, I will put them away this way because the water will eventually evaporate and dry. So now you can see, just from this, you wet this and these little tips down here will kind of smudge a little bit. See, you're moving all the water around up here. You can see, even just with this being wet without any color on it. Watch, it'll fill in. See, it'll completely fill in that shading. So, lots of different things you can use with the exact same tool. Maybe just with something different in it. So, this is just water again. You can see it's really, like this part right here, it's really going to soften the edge of this line if you keep working it. It's not going to make it disappear because it was stamped, but it will definitely soften the edge of it. So just a couple cool different things you can do. Now, one thing you have to be much more careful if you're doing this on shimmer paper because shimmer paper cannot take this much water. It'll be kind of goopy, but still think it looks pretty, pretty cool with the colors there. So now I'm going to close this up and we're going to do, we're going to attempt to do the same thing with... Uh, shimmer paper. Now, I can't say it's going to be exactly the same because sometimes I will change up what I did, but still pretty interesting to see none the least. So for this one, I'm going to bring this back in. What do I have in there? I have the trees. We'll do the trees first. So I have my paper. Again, I have it met up to this line here. I'm going to do the... Um, the tree line first and we will start with the mossy meadow this one might end up looking a little different you never know I might leave out the purple there so we're gonna do mossy meadow so you can even see just with this one how differently it's picking up the actual ink texture. This one has way more depth to the picture, right? <laughs> Drag your stamps out. Well, that's the point of this, hopefully, Penny. Hopefully you don't have much, much uh, adult obligations and maybe you can fool around with your products for a little bit, right? That's my goal is that hopefully you'll get something out that you bought and you're like, well, why did I even get this? So then I'm going to just flip this over. Actually, I'm going to do this one this way this time. So it kind of has more of the pebbly look, but I did use the saw, the, the flat side, not the printed side. Go right there. And I could have stepped that down, but I didn't think about it till after I did it. Okay. So this time I'm going to use something a little lighter. No, you know what? I'm going to go with Pear Pizzazz again, but I might just stamp it off first. Now, this is a little liquidy, and since it is a little runny, I don't want to flip it over. I am going to wipe this out. If I wasn't using it right away, I wouldn't. Okay, so there's my Pear Pizzazz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off first. Stamp it. Stamp it. Okay, so since this is still a little wet down here, I think this one was the water. Nope, that's alcohol. This one was the water. I'm going to just take my brush and make sure it's wet, and I'm just going to spread this around just a little bit. So I am definitely not squeezing, and I don't want this one super wet because this is just shimmery white paper. It is definitely a little bit more substantial, but it's still nowhere near a watercolor style paper. Okay, and just blend up here just a little. There we go. Okay, so there's that one. I think this stamp must have a little mark on it because it always leaves this little bubble. And I think I didn't realize it. 
Is that or has a piece of goop on it? Yep, there it was. Just a little piece of something. Also, one thing to mention while we're on here live, if you ever are fooling around with your stamps, especially you should do this when you first get them. Now granted, this is going to go behind and I do want it to be a little bit softer. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, stamp this off. That way it'll kind of hopefully go to the background a little bit. If you ever notice that you have an imperfection with your stamp, whoever you ordered your stamp from, your demonstrator, can help you. Because if you have a defective stamp, they absolutely will replace it for you. So keep that in mind. But if they don't make it any longer, they can't replace it. So if you ever have a problem, make sure you call your demo. So I'm going to pull this off and stamp it just to get a little bit of that intensity of color out. Oh, I missed this side over here. All right, that looks pretty good. Hopefully this will be light enough. I'm going to move my And if it's not dark enough, I can always line my trees up and restamp it. Actually, wow, that looked that went right behind there. That worked out really well. Now there's definitely ink here. You can see it if you look at it closely. But just just for a, a general rule, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to stamp another set of mountains, but I want to make them a little bit darker. So I'm going to do Night of Navy, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to stamp this in Night of Ink, or I should say Ink It Night of Navy. I'm going to stamp it just to remove some of the depth of the ink. And then I want this to be over a little bit, so I'm going to move it over one quarter inch and I'm going to move it down just to see what that looks like. So I'm going to just, nope, that's too much. Went the wrong direction, I think. There we go over. We'll be there. Yeah, maybe I'll just go over because that way it'll at least be something. I'm just going to go over. So I just went over a quarter inch from where I had it lined up. So that's a nice part about being able to use the grid paper too. Me doesn't look exactly what I thought it would look like, but we're going to blend it anyway. So you can use the grid paper to kind of move your stuff over, though, if you're stamping that way. It kind of works out neat when you do it the correct way. So I'm going to take my blender pen. Again, I'm just always making sure that it's clean before I start because you don't want to bring in a color that you haven't used. Also, if you're ever worried about whether or not it's wet, you can feel it on your finger. And if it is dry, you could use it for something different. Grab yourself a different one, but they do come in three packs, so kind of nice. I'm going to again just uh, color the kind of shaded side of the tree. I'm not the tree. She's the whiz of the mountain. Probably if I would have done this again, I think I would have left off the se second mountain or I would have stamped the second mountain first. But it doesn't look so bad. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did before, just to fill in the sky. So for this one, I'm just going to do a very light, light blue sky. What time are we running on? 10.20. Oh my goodness, I am pokey today. Well, so much for doing two of those. I might only be able to do one. You have to save the other stamp for YouTube. Maybe we can do that this week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the watercolor or the aqua painter that has water. And I'm gonna be very, very ginger with the water. So I'm gonna add some water here to this seaside spray, but I'm not gonna to try to, I don't wanna douse this because this one cannot take as much water. So I'm gonna be kind of gentle. Let me put this here so I can hold it in place. And I'm just gonna kind of fill in the sky. Seaside spray is a really, really light color. So this is a great sky color, but you might almost think, oh, I can't really see it. It is not super easy to see, especially specifically on camera. Let me see if you can tell the difference. You can see that it's wet on this side a little bit more. But the nice part is this, the uh, shimmer paper also has that really pretty shine. So it'll make, when it's dry, it'll make it look like a sparkly sky. 
So same thing again, if you feel like you're not getting enough color, you could always even add in a drop of reinker. But I don't want it to be too, too dark. I kind of want the idea. This must have some sort of fuzz in it. The idea of a very soft sky. You can kind of leave a couple patches of white and it will give like the, the illusion of a cloud. So it's very light. Really, really light. But it's, it's pretty. It's probably much easier to see this actual in person. I'm just going to add a couple little dark spots around where I have my pretend clouds. The other thing you can do is you can always take a little bit of ink off of the pad if you wanted it to be a little bit darker. I like this one because it has a really nice tip as opposed to the real broad one. Okay, so there's that. So we did the top. The only thing we really have to do now is the grass. So I'm going to stick again with a really soft color, which is soft sea foam. This is another one that can be a little bit hard to see sometimes, but since we have a nice refill drop in there, we should be okay. So I'm just going to add some water to this. Again, I'm going to do water for this one as well. Once again, you can let these air dry. If you're impatient, you could use your heat tool. It's a little darker there, but that's okay. That could be like our, our mound of grass that started growing. Okay, so you don't want to overwork this paper too, too much. So we're just going to kind of bleed the edge there a little bit. So that's the edge of between where our what was that? Light pear pizzazz because we stamped it off. You could even, if you wanted to, have marked out a little spot and stamped like a lake something or other here. You could even do like a little bit of an edging of grass. Just put your aqua painter to the side. I don't want to get too crazy with it, but all right, so we're going to leave that because usually I get a little overboard and less is more. That's what they tell me anyway. So I'm going to heat this real quick, see if I can get it to dry up a little bit, and then we'll mount both of these And this one is definitely nice and dry by now. It's probably got a slight dampness to it, but it's definitely much more dry. And you will notice one other thing. When you go and you think this is the ugliest card and nobody should let you watercolor because you just ruined it, and you go downstairs and you eat your lunch and you have a cup of coffee and you come back and you look at it and you might be like, is that the same thing that I just finished? Because when it dries, the colors will soften and it makes it look totally different. And I tell you this from experience because there's been several cards, especially when I very first started watercoloring or messing around with this, that I thought, oh my gosh, I should never do that again. But when you let it dry, it really does give a much different appearance. So again, when you look at this from the side, it's a little hard to see one here, but you have the complete shimmer from the shimmer paper. So that's really, really pretty. If you wanted that on the watercolor paper, the other thing you could do, let me see if I have one that's empty, is you could take a Stampin' Spritzer. And I usually do alcohol with this, that way it doesn't get funky. But you could put a drop of the shimmer paint in here, fill it with the shimmer uh, fill it with alcohol and then you spray it and this will give a nice shimmer. So I'm going to spray this. Now, since that is watercolor paper, it will almost kind of reactivate it for a second, but because it's alcohol, it should dry pretty quickly. So I'm going to heat it one more time, just real quick.
I think the um, those shimmer sprays were one of my favorite things that we ever came out with. Now, there was not very much in there, so it's not super shimmery, but it definitely has a nice sheen to it. Okay, let me move all these out of the way. Here's our two pieces. So what I will do is I will go and do the other two versions with the waterfront stamp set. I will do those one day later this week on YouTube Live. So if you don't follow me there, you might want to head on over and stay tuned. I want to show you one other thing. So this is really wonky and wrinkly and you're like, wow, this doesn't look good. I'm going to show you a trick. Just in case you don't know this, you might. You might not. So I'm just going to take a piece of scrap paper that I've used for something else. I'm going to put them in here and I'm going to actually make sure this is folded in half. And they should both fit in there nicely. So I'm going to put those into my die cutting machine. So I just have my regular old plates. Doesn't really matter what plate. But you put this through with your piece of printer paper and you just run this through your die cutting machine. And you can do it just once, but just for the heck of it, we'll do it back and forth. Hey, Bridget. Thanks for stopping in. And then, hopefully, this turned out the way I was trying to show you. It will, look, flatten the papers. This is significantly flatter, okay, because this one was the watercolor paper. This one's still just a little bit wonky, but when we glue this down, it'll be fine. So there are those two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount these. I think I'm going to put this one on Peacock and this one on Knight of Navy. But I'm also going to put a piece of black because I think that really makes the color really, really pop. Oh, uh, that one's folded wrong, but that's okay because nobody's going to see it but me. Unless I mail this to somebody. So here is black. All right, so let me just trim these down. So one of, I think these are both about the same size. Let's see. Yeah, approximately. So this is five by three. Oh, three and a half. That's even smaller. And that one's three and three quarters. All right, so we'll do this four by five and a quarter. That will be four. This one. Okay. And then this one is going to be... That was three and a half, three and three quarters by five and a quarter. There you go. So that works out. Same thing again, up to you. If you feel like you want to um, add a sentiment, I kind of think the way these are almost would ruin it by adding a sentiment. That's just my personal opinion though. You could you could also, instead of stamping something on here, because you'd be afraid of ruining it, you could stamp a sentiment on a little scrap piece. So I am going to, well, if this is gonna work, let's see. Nope, that one's empty. Use the end, in case you haven't heard, we are getting new adhesive. Oh, well, thank goodness, because that one just ripped that piece right up. Try again. Nope, that one's empty. So the fast fuse is leaving the building, as you can clearly, <laughs> clearly see. What took you so long at the end? Oh, you know, just sticking my layers together. Just another day in the life of Rachel. Oh my God, that one's ended too. This is a sign. No more fast fuse, Rach. No more fast fuse. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to layer this down. And once you layer this down, that's one other thing. It really is going to become much more flat. And then once you put it on here. So this is definitely going to show because you know why? The way I folded this was for a different type of a card. You know what I'm going to do? I did this one for a card actually for this month and I scored it in the middle by accident. So this one I'm going to lay on the inside. And then we're going to fold this in like a window. I don't know what I'm going to end up doing to the outside of this. Huh? This might take me a little bit of time, but put this on the outside. Maybe it'll be like a reverse card, like the really pretty parts on the inside. It's like, let me take you on a journey to the mountains. I don't know. You guys know I'm crazy. I don't think I've ever gotten rid of this much fast shoes at one time. 
So anyway, we're going to have two new adhesives, one that is going to be very similar to a fast fuse and one that is going to be a kind of a replacement for the snail, but much stronger. And you guys know I still prefer the liquid glue. That's my favorite. So this is what this is going to look like. It'll be something here on the front. I don't know what. And then you'll open it and you'll see that beautiful view. So this one you're going to have to stay tuned for because I'm going to have to finish that before I can post a picture of it. Let me just adhere my other one down. We still will have the tear and tape. We still will have the liquid glue. We still will have the fine tip glue pen. So that's good news. And that's going to look really nice. This one's a little bit more of a dark card just in the color scheme. But this will be a nice, not a lot of times people struggle for masculine cards. This will make a nice card for that. I'm just gonna put this on top. I like to use the liquid glue though because I think it really um, gives you the flexibility. If you glue something down wrong, you can fix it. So there you go, just this nice little piece of paper that was a scrap paper. Help this out by flattening out our images. Let me scoot some of these things out of the way so you guys can see the rest of this before we say goodbye. So this one will be, I'll just have to add a white panel to the inside and that'll be a card just like that. This one I'm going to finish somehow that it'll be like coming, looking out your window. So something there, I don't know. Maybe I could put the trees on the front. Like I could finish this with the die cut of the trees or part of the mountains. Might be kind of neat. So I hope you guys enjoyed these cards today. I hope you learned something about the aqua painters, which these specific ones are retiring, but we will have replacements, and the blender pens. These, thank God, are not retiring. They come three in a pack, so you definitely get a lot of stuff to be able to use. They are reusable. You can reuse them from color to color. You don't need one for every color. You can switch colors right after you're done one just by wiping it off, so it's very, very simple to use. If you would like to get any of these supplies, you can head to my online store, which is reachthestamper.stampinup.net. Don't forget, if you're there, to get the cleaning pad and the refill. Super bargain because it's on the clearance rack and one of the best investments you have. Trust me. I promise you, you will love using this cleaning pad. I will put all of these cards, measurements, etc., and my other recommendation for my favorite watercolor paper onto my blog, which is reachthestamper.com. So if you don't follow me there, go ahead over and follow. That way you can be updated on all the fun stuff we do. I do have a blog hop coming up tomorrow, so maybe I actually finish the other cards for that. You never know. Thank you guys so much for watching, for the likes, the comments, the shares. I hope you all are doing well. I miss you, and I'm trying to get on here a little bit more often. So again, if you don't already, make sure that you like me here on Facebook. And if you follow, it should tell you when I'm live. I think they updated it recently. You can also find me on YouTube, and if you're on YouTube and you click subscribe and hit the bell, it will tell you every time I go live when I have a new video, or I post a video, or I'm live. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye.